We are on the Cross Charlotte Trail. This is bike infrastructure that's intended to connect existing infrastructure, but, but be a, a trail that goes from one side of Charlotte to the other. Uh, and so this is actually three projects in one. Uh, we have this conversion of a metal warehouse here, which is a, um, a restaurant, karaoke bar, um, playground. Uh, and then on this side, this warehouse was converted to another food hall. It's a slightly different food hall than Optimus Hall where we just were, um, but it's 13 different food stalls in this building. Uh, this is one concept and then this bridge over connects the two. Uh, the idea is that um, folks hanging out over here that have a drink can go across the bridge to the food hall and back and forth and that this kind of becomes a lively space that crosses over the trail. None of this was anything else to really come up here for in 2011. And so you just kind of turn the corner and, and again, kind of what they've been captured now, that front porch that people started bringing in community. Because uh, we had OMB to the south from 2009 and then in 2011 and I think 10 or 12 on either side was Noda. And so the Noda OG was right here and now it's kind of their, their funky place where they play around with their beers, where their production's over on the other side of Noda. But this used to be like just where you didn't come. This was a gravel parking lot. I mean, this was really a warehouse district. You weren't here after dark. So it's come a long way. So at, as we get to ride up too, you'll see, you know, what we really do well in Charlotte is we make these great spaces and bike paths and then we end them without warning. And so it's gonna be a little hairy as we get under Matheson. Um, so just as a heads up, but you know, we'll, we'll take over the lane um, and it's not, we won't take you anywhere unsafe, but just to, just to see, you know, we're still working on our, con our connection pieces here and we've got some great ideas and it's just the infill that we're really, it's a good problem to have, um, to be honest. Uh, some things with what we're going into, so we're going to Highland Mill 3. Uh, this was the first electric mill in North Carolina and it was powered off of a steam locomotive that sat on these tracks over here. So they had the steam locomotive fired up and then the wire that went to the mill to get power. So originally this was Electric Park. It was uh, founded kind of as North Charlotte when the mills came in and then it became coined as Electric Park because of that, that like, just having that piece. So you'll, you'll see uh, some of the remnants. I don't know if anybody caught the giant rail yard. That's the, uh, the scab we can't get rid of that No Fork Southern has tasked us with. Um, there's plans to do a, a park over top, but the last number was two billion and that was before COVID. So uh, there's a multiplier on the two billion at this point. Probably will never happen, but it's just, it's looking and it's, it, I think it speaks more to what uh, the city is seeing growing north and just the communities that are getting so strong. And now we still have this huge, just, you know, uh, the opposite of a good corridor <laughs> uh, for trains, you know, and, but that was our historic past. Those rails were put in because that's how you came out of the Northeast Corridor here. So um, with that, I think we'll, we'll head into Noda. So we are in Noda proper. Um, and this is uh, the mill that Chris was mentioning. Uh, on this side of the street are the mill houses. So this one's gone, but you see how similar that house looks to this one and five or six in a row that are all started at really as the same type of house uh, and have been modified. Some are still residential and a lot of them have been converted to commercial. So we're gonna see um, a house just down the street that is called the Goodyear house. The idea being on a farm, if you have a good year, you add a room on. So every room kind of has a different vibe. Uh, it's built around a hundred year old chair or holly tree. Uh, I think we learned during this project that hollies aren't all, only bushes. If they get big enough, they become trees. And then we're also gonna walk and look at a warehouse space uh, that's been converted to a restaurant. This project does not have parking, so that was part of the rezoning. So this is the Goodyear house. Uh, this was one of the houses, you can tell the houses along here are all very similar. They were all mill houses. The folks who 
lived in these houses, worked in the mills. Um, and so the, the original house is here. We've added this breezeway that goes all the way through to the backyard so you can go to the backyard without having to go through the restaurant. Uh, dogs on patios and in restaurants, Charlotte's not really very cool with, so it's a way to be able to bring your dog, sit in the back and not, not kind of cause problems. Uh, the restrooms and things are on this side and the, the backyard was really designed to work around an existing hundred year old holly tree. So this is the holly tree that the entire kind of courtyard was built around. This is the corner in the back of the original house. Uh, and each of these rooms we gave a nickname to kind of help us design. So this room is titled The Wandering Botanist. So you see all the flowers and kind of technical stuff there. This is the drunken handyman shed. So this is kind of the outdoor bar. This was all new construction. Uh, we found the steel and left it out for six months to let it rust uh, and really tried to make it feel like a weathered piece that had been here for a while. Uh, we also planted the bamboo across the back and the idea is that the backyards kind of connect. So you see across here we've got this structure which was built at the beginning of COVID to be able to have outdoor dining uh, and so that's on on this adjacent property uh, and the idea is that it can kind of connect as other properties are built out. So we mentioned the NODA Neighborhood Association. This project was reviewed by them and we worked with them uh, on the design of this building. It's um, mixed use, retail on the ground floor and apartments above. You can see things like um, the two sets of windows and then the one at the very top sets back. Uh, we did things like that to make it feel like a shorter building and to try to minimize the impact of it on the street. Also, if you look at kind of the larger bungalows on 36th Street, the idea was to break it into the three masses so it felt more like three houses along the street versus one big building. Uh, this is the parking deck entrance here with these round columns on the corner. Uh, this street, you know, goes up to 36th Street. And there are three retail spaces. One of the retail spaces is affordable retail, so it's below market rate. Um, are there affordable rental units as well? There are a minimum of three. There are 65 total units, and I know at least three are for affordable within that. How big is the retail space, each one? Each one is around between 16 to 1,800 square feet. So really trying to target local retailers, small spaces, um, not super small, but manageable for local, local is folks. Is it feasible for food and beverage or is it just like... Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. There's going to be a Greek restaurant going into the middle one. How did the Neighborhood Association view the project? Uh, there were some challenges with the scale. We really had to, to work with them to do things uh, to bring the scale down. These folks, of course, didn't want those folks looking in their windows and so this area, breaking this down and having that recess at the top was a part of it. And even here, what you're seeing is a fourth floor up above that's really pushed back. Uh, so it's maybe slightly smaller than the one below it, but you can imagine another floor here is really a much taller building. It's one of our first projects in NODA, probably. Uh, each unit's a condominium 
couple things. You see our bike racks over here, kind of hit all the trash cans and things in this pavilion, which made a nice entrance coming in. Uh, and the client was an architect and is a talented steel fabricator. So the gutter that, that goes along this entire edge when it rains drops into the, the steel ponds out front and make their way back to the stream. Uh, so it was kind of fun. It's in a deluge, it's kind of fun to, to watch it, it, it drop. Um, part of this project was the creek restoration that you'll see on the other side when we get there. All of the units open up towards the creek and have a view kind of through the way. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We can see that when we go around. Uh, each studio has a patio, and we wanted to try to keep it as open as possible, so we used a piece of perforated metal and bent it so there's no frame, so it's kind of a nice view. Um, but every unit, all the first five units are the same, and the sixth unit has some extra windows and um, a, is a little bit larger unit, uh, but they all have a I think it's 10 or 12 foot wide patio on the other side. Uh, and they're set up to be live work. I'm not sure if anyone does kind of live work out of them, um, but the ground floor has a studio behind the garage as well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for being a part of this. We had, I had a blast, and I'm sure we had beautiful weather, so you guys were a great crew. Uh, enjoy the rest of seeing you.
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.